Thank you, sir. Let me quickly move on to Prince. Prince Alabo, uh, thanks for joining us. Good evening to you, sir. You have a question or? Yes, uh, I have a question for. Can okay. you hear me? We can hear you now. Yeah, good, good evening, evening you, everyone. Yes. Where are you joining yeah, from? Good evening, my big brother. Yeah, I'm joining from United Kingdom. Yeah, our brother, we appreciate you for coming to our program. We really appreciate Thank it. I'll you. be following you. I'll be following your program, uh, being my brother. I have just a three question for you. Is you are uh, my Niger data brother. What can you tell us about the OETF going on in our region? It's about sharing formula. It has nothing to do with you or me. And then coming to the issue of oil theft. And that's why I say Nigerians are the problems of Nigeria. Some people will tell you the oil in our own. And so even if we take on our thing, we take. That's why if you have a mango tree in your backyard, and that mango tree, you have a mango tree, let's say in Yenegua, it's in your house. And then they say, because by virtue of the laws of the land, any mango tree that you have, you must get license before you pluck that tree. You must go and get license from, let's say, Portacons. Do you know? And then you see, afternoon, broad day afternoon, some people will come from uh, uh, Oyo, and they will say, well, they gave them license in Portacons to come and pluck the tree and sell and then gives proceeds to those people in Port Harcourt and then collect their own. Meanwhile, the leaves from those trees will, you know, um, uh, what do you call it now, fall on your compound and, you know, dirty the whole place. You'll be the one to, to sweep it. What will you do? In the night when everybody's asleep, you will wake your children and say, come on, uh, May we pluck our own cell phone so that we will feel sell. That mango tree at the end of the day belongs to nobody. Everybody will be plucking it, including you. You will steal from it. That's what is happening in Niger Delta. Oil, for example, they say oil belongs to the federal government. Uh, that is the rule. And the federal government will, once they discover oil in your land, that land automatically belongs to the federal government. The federal government can give your farmland, let's say, for example, your farmland or your shrine. They discover oil on it. The federal government come. They give somebody a license, oil mining license. They come and drill oil. And those people will take the oil away. Uh, worst case, they will build one long school in your community. And then they put one big signboard that is bigger than the school. Uh, uh, Shell, NNPC, <laughs> Ajib joint venture. Uh, <laughs> And then they go to the palace and share money for some of the elders there. That is all. They will tell you there's production sharing uh, contracts. They have paid federal government their own. Then they have collected their own. Give some people in the community where they carry cut last. They give them small, small things. And then they go. <laughs> the day those boys that you are giving small, small things, carrying cut last, carrying gun, the day they look at ah, they will, what monitor you? How is this man doing it? And then he comes, he takes and go. He comes, takes and go. I know we need, we need to collect our own too now. And then, because there is hunger in the land, the policemen that they are using to collect, those policemen too, the boys will tell them, ah, Oga, collect your own, no. Collect your own. Uh -huh. The policemen will be hustling to be posted to Niger Delta. The army will be hustling to be posted to Niger Delta. And because it now turns to, everybody now becomes a thief. Because the wealth belongs to nobody. Come and you, Russia is building pipelines from Russia to Europe to supply gas. And they are protecting those pipelines with technology. Saudi Aramco drills almost 9 point something million barrel per day. We were struggling to get 1.3 million barrel per day. Even that 1.3 million barrel, we get more than that. But because everybody's stealing it, let me give you now what happens. The um, IOC will come. Because everybody is stealing from the pipe, the IOC will drill 1.7 million. Then they will tell you, ah, the boys stole uh, 
500,000 barrel. And so what you already have now is 1.2 million. Meanwhile, in the real sense, what the boys stole is 200,000 barrel. The IOC will keep 300,000 barrel to themselves. The NNPC will come and say, ah, uh, you see, what was stolen is one point, um, one, 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 what, what, what was stolen is uh, 400,000 barrel. Meanwhile, the boys stole 200,000. IOC.com come out 500. NNPC come out 200. At the end of the day, government gets 1 million barrel of crude. And they tell everybody the tifa, the tifa, the tifa. And anybody that is now in that sector will like, and I saw this place, they look pretty. <laughs> if you now say, we want to protect pipeline with technology, they'll tell you, no, 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 it will not work. It won't work. No, it can't work that way. We have to do it the way we're doing it. The IOC will sponsor people. The police will sponsor people. The community will sponsor people. Um, even the oil companies will sponsor people because that are food where everybody they chop. They will now come with one very stupid and useless slogan and say, now we're Percy, they work now in the chop. That's yes. why it is called workshop. So hmm. then that same person, he comes to Lagos, he buys property. He goes to Dubai, he buys property. He goes to London, he buys property. And then he comes back, he comes on air and say, Nigeria is so corrupt. Nigeria is this, Nigeria is that. Election comes, he will sponsor uh, candidates to go there and ensure that status quo is maintained. He gets the contract to continue to uh, invest in uh, pipeline protection or drilling. And then it, it, he tells you, and then tomorrow they'll give him chief Tessie title. They'll say, oh, this man is a philanthropist. He's an investor. Is this. And then you check records. You can't really say this was how this man made his money. This was where he struggled from. This was why he started business. But all you just knew, all you know of him is that one day he just got one government contract and boom, he became a multi billionaire. That's what is happening in the Niger Delta. Wow. That to the extent that people who also were used for election, all those small, small boys, election come. You buy gun, give them, say, you have to protect me. Once I get there, I will remember you. They protect you. They get there. You get there. You forget them. You think now you have arrived. Those boys now will not carry those guns and begin to terrorize everywhere because also they need to eke out a living. And so gradually from 1999 to date, it is getting worse. So my brother, now we, they do ourselves. Nobody, they do us. I can give you categorically, I'm saying this now, sorry, one of these government regulator regulatory agency when they brought a new uh, executive director and the man said from now you know before now before now dpro if you come to buy crude from nigerian uh, uh, nigeria the crude you are buying nobody measures it here if you are taking the crude to poland they call it output measurement they will tell you will load the vessel here in, in, in Nigeria, in Niger Delta. And then the man who is going to measure it, government agent, who is going to measure it, you, the person that is buying, will pay for his flight ticket to Poland. He will fly to Poland and go and wait for you in the hotel. The vessel will go past water. He might stop in France and offload small, stop in UK and offload small. By the time he gets to Poland, the man, our, our regulator will come down from the hotel and say, now nah, they want to do output measurements. He don't do hotel, don't chop, he don't collect extra code of office. When a new executive director came and said, no, now we want to install meter that you don't need to go to Poland, the workers went on strike. Wow. Thank you very much, um, Barista Liribos. To be honest, this is a huge revelation. We actually need to cut this particular part, you know, so that it can go viral. You know, uh, admin, you are listening, please. This part needs to be cut. It needs to go viral because this is a revolution that N Nigerians have been asking questions, questions, you know, year and there. We, we are not sure what is happening in our country. To be honest, we all are just being hopeful, 
Nigeria will be better someday, how and all that. You're going to get old. You're still being hopeful Nigeria is going to be better. Nigeria you know watch information. Nigeria watch information, yes. sorry. Why yeah. I throw that question out, I spent over 12 years offshore. So I know how these things happen. Hmm. Before I move into the UK, so he just mentioned DPR. That is a key place nobody is looking at. Those people hmm. are dangerous. When we are talking about the output, those are the people, they spend their time, they stay in the FPSO. They are the people there where you load out this oil. So those are the people, more the key problem, not just saying NPC without this DPR. Thank they you. are all over every FPSO. So I want uh, our brother Oshoma to do a little check on, on those people to look at their I activity. If I did it, I won't be giving you all this privileged information. I have. Yes, yeah. Wow. This, to be honest, this part needs to go viral. You know, so Nigerians, Unamata get us it bill, and then they share bonbon and all those rubbish just like go, go viral. This important part right now. Some of you might not even have interest. Because uh -huh. the things that are supposed to go viral so that we can rescue ourselves out of this modern slavery. We are not the letter and go viral. That's the problem. But meanwhile, I'd like us to quickly move on. Let me call on the next person on the panel uh, to pass their question. Abdul Malik, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Where you join us from? And if you don't have a questions, just go ahead and say what you want to say, or you can go pass. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Ninja Watch. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, Mr. Oshoma. My question go like I'm joining I'm joining you from Czech Republic. My question go like this. Why is it that we have refiner that we cannot re, we cannot recruit we cannot refine crude oil? Second is this how can we fight this corruption in our country so that Nigeria will be better? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Mr. Abdul. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why quickly. Uh, because of time. Um, Nigeria is, um, you know, when you drill, you remove the 400 and four, four, 445,000 barrel per day meant for local refining, meant for local, rec local consumption. You remove it. That product is what NNPC is supposed to be refining and selling for the federal government. So we had um, we had four refineries, one in Wari, two in Portacourt, one in Kaduna. Um, one one in Portacourt was the, you have the sixty thousand barrel per day capacity. You have the one twenty thousand barrel per day. The 60,000 barrel per day was built in the 60s. The 120,000 barrel per day was built in the 90s. Uh, those refineries were pumping collectively $1.5 billion into it. And last time they told us that it will work, they just used ROPG, uh, what they call in the industry, uh, pie gas, to flare it, to give you the impression that, oh, yes, ah, fire don't they come out to. Meanwhile, the mechanical components were not working. As I speak to you, now even the Kaduna refinery, if they they renovate and um, do Kaduna refinery today, where is the pipeline that will take crude to Kaduna from Niger Delta? They are all corroded. And so, why is it not working? Why is it not working is the fact that this crude meant for local consumption, the NFPC is supposed to be refining. It now became a racket. So, if I am in NNPC and you are my friend. I want to make life better for you. I was like, okay, you know what? This crew that we are supposed to refine, let me just give you 50,000 liters, 50,000 barrel to go and refine. Just look for a, a refinery abroad that will buy it. And then in exchange, they will, you will now buy refined petroleum product and bring to NNPC. All of the byproducts, you go use and take pocket and share proceeds with an NPC. So the more, if I give you today, tomorrow another person will come and go say, ah, bros, give uh, this man uh, 50,000 barrel. Uh, me, I go like also get. They gradually started empowering their men 
And so refinery, when they know they put crude, the plants, you know, started being corroded. Uh, the pipelines were corroded. The pipe, the plants, when no they work, you know, their machineries, when you know they work, it goes stiff. And over time, gradually we abandon the refinery. Even when the refinery is abandoned, there is no need for doing turnaround maintenance until we now woke up one day and realized that ah, these refineries you know they work again because we now completely from fifty thousand barrel we moved to hundred thousand barrel to two hundred the entire product we moved it boom give to people to go and refine outside okay and then bring back to us and that was how we use our own hand to kill. Uh, refinery. Let me also tell you that, thanks to the man that uh, worked in the industry before, he can also confirm this. In the in the sixties, when these refineries were built, the federal government built twenty depots across the federation. That once you pump uh, uh, petroleum product from Niger Delta, it goes straight to all the depots. You don't need to truck it. But with all of this, uh, like the analysis I gave you, some of these things are not, these pipelines were no longer working. Some of them, let me shock you, in Ejibo, in Lagos, NNPC, we want to pump product. Some of the staff will go and tell area boys, say, man, we will pump this night to Mona Station for corner. So if they pump 1 million liters, for example, the boys will steal 200. NNPC will report that they stole uh, 400 because they will now use truck to remove 200, that uh, hmm. 200,000. So boy stole 200,000. Like a bank now, I'm robber. You tell I'm robber, say, we'll carry money today. They come to rob the bank. The I'm robbers will rob 3 million. Cashier will come out 2 million. The way they are now uh, 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 giving an audit of account, they'll say, well, I'm robber 2, 5 million. No. I'm robber will now sit down for TV. They watch, say they say the T5 million. Meanwhile, now three million the thief. Okay. They'll be shocked. Say, Can you imagine? So, with all of this, our effort, we came, we stole only three million. This guy just sit down coolly. They stole two million. So, it is all of these things that led to the refineries not working. And then NMPC became ATM for the government of the DNA government that comes. So, when they share crude like that, give their friend, whatever comes as election, they near. They will bring small, take support, the president and the government in power for re-election. You won't have the, the nerve or the gods to want to probe them because they give you small things at the election now. So that's where all of the rots came okay. from and okay. led to the comatose of today. Thank you. Thank you very much.